Hello and welcome to our special segment, CIIE, A Global Perspective. We're coming to you from our studio on the Bond in Shanghai with that spectacular skyline behind us. I'm Dong Shi. I'm Abu Bakr Hari from ZBC, the Zanzibar Broadcasting Corporation in Tanzania. The Expo has attracted over 150 countries, regions and international organizations and Tanzania obviously is one of them. Abu Bakr, welcome to our program today. I think most of the products from Tanzania this year are coffee related. Exactly. Talk to us about what makes Tanzanian coffee special on an incredibly competitive international market. Oh, thank you, Zhang. Uh, that is true. The uh, difference with uh, uh, the Tanzania coffee beans to compare with other uh, coffee beans uh, are from other countries over the world is about its taste. I think uh, Tanzania coffee beans taste is more uh, different and very strong to compare with other uh, coffee. And why it's very strong and it's nice to compare with others? Because we have a good fertile land and the weather of Tanzania. And I can't wait to see all of the other products on display in the Tanzania section. Thank you so much. CGT reporter Chen Lan Yeo went to the exhibition booths of Tanzania to check out what else is on display there. Take a look. It really takes a great amount of time and energy to explore and appreciate each section here at the 6 CIE. The only thing I can think of right now is coffee. I really need to recharge and get an energy boost. So yeah, let's go find some coffee. So as I walk into the Tanzanian product section, I'm immediately greeted by the intense aroma of freshly brewed coffee here. Can't wait to give it a try. From rich and flavorful coffee beans to convenient and aromatic instant coffee, there's something to suit every coffee lover's preference. We are making this instant coffee out of Robusta and Arabica mix. And it brings us a very nice uh, quality instant coffee. Tanzanian beans uh, coffee, they are different because of the purity that they have. Yeah, that's the only difference it makes from them and the different other countries, yeah. Because they are very pure. And when you taste it, you feel that that is a really coffee. While coffee is undoubtedly still in the spotlight here, the Tanzanian Pavilion also showcased a diverse range of other products that reflect the country's rich cultural heritage and natural resources. It's from United Arab Emirates, uh, from Qatar, uh, United States of America, uh, UK. But these are small chunks, the big chunks, they're selling them in, here in China. And that's why we are here for the CIE, so that we can explore some further markets. With China's vast market potential, the CIE serves as a gateway for Tanzanian businesses to expand and embark on new horizons. Join us at the CIE to unlock more stories. As you can see, many exhibitors from Tanzania are looking to break into the Chinese market. China is now Tanzania's largest trading partner. The Tanzania government says in trade volume with China called supers last year's record. CGTN Isaac Lukando has more information from Dar es Salaam. The volume of trade between Tanzania and China is on an upward trajectory. In the first eight months of this year, the two countries have already traded $5.4 billion worth of goods, 6.8% more than last year. China has continued to expand its import of African goods and get granted uh, zero tariff to the 98% of the taxable items from the least developed countries of African, including Tanzania. Tanzania mainly exports agricultural products such as soybeans and avocados, as well as assorted minerals to China. Imports from China include vehicles, textiles and light industrial products. For the last seven years, China has been Tanzania's largest and most significant trading partner. With a Chinese market of more than 1.4 billion people to potentially benefit from, the Tanzanian government is hoping for sustained growth in trade between the two countries. In the first eight months of the year, Tanzania exported around 20,000 tons of soybean to China. But some economists argue that the country is pulling below its weight. We have arable land that we can cultivate more of 
such an item as soya so that we can a little bit have a lion's share when it comes to selling it to China. Uh, that having said, even you know, processing uh, plants, I think we should even embark on making sure that we process more and uh, sell it to China. The Tanzanian government says it is currently working on a plan to raise the value of its exports to China from $600 million recorded in 2020 to about $1 billion by 2025. This, it believes, will balance trade between the two nations and bring about greater economic benefits for its citizens. Isaac Lukando, CGTN, Dar es Salaam. Abu Bakr, this is the sixth edition of the China International Import Expo. This is your first time reporting on this expo. Uh, let's begin with your overall impression of the CIIE. Oh, thank you, John. Uh, it's a big uh, impression of uh, this expo, the sixth expo here in China. And uh, my uh, impression of this expo, I think, is to bring more of the co collaboration uh, between China and other countries of the world. Uh, as you can see, China nowadays become as a role model of the world and start to have this exhibition uh, here in China in order to attract other countries to uh, bring together and working together in terms of business investment, in terms of the exchanging idea, cultural exchange and other things. And I think, uh, because uh, according to this uh, exhibition here in China, uh, the development of other countries uh, would be more and increase their uh, level of income, national income, talking about that, and also uh, to lift up the life of the citizen of other countries. The role of media in promoting trade has been involving in China. Social media become the platform of e-commerce. Um, what does it mean uh, from China and African countries or your views? I think two words, essentially, beginning with A, um, awareness and access. You may not know this, but uh, social media live stream has been a huge part of promoting and marketing products here in China. It's something that the Chinese customers have grown increasingly used to. And if you come to think about it, when you're promoting, for example, um, Tanzanian coffee, it's of great quality. It's original. What people don't know is the story, the cultural context and background behind it. If you can have a live streaming event mm. promoting Tanzanian coffee and tell people why it's special, why it's unique, why its taste will give you that spark you're not going to get from, you know, other coffees from other places. It's going to be a great event. So I think people are really just taking opportunity of what technology has to offer and trying to reach as many customers, potential customers, as possible. And I know you've been in China for a while, um, you know, touring around and talking to your counterparts in press and media and also talking to ordinary Chinese people. What opportunities have you observed between China and Tanzania in terms of trade? People from Tanzania can invest in China and uh, people from China can invest in Tanzania. And especially uh, in terms of agriculture, and uh, tourism sector, mining sectors, and other uh, uh, very important things. You know, um, I'm not sure if uh, <laughs> Chinese people are really interested to, for the tourism sector, but I think it could be uh, the, the first time nowadays to go in Tanzania and invest in terms of tourism sectors because nowadays we have a good uh, situation and environment, especially of our policy, especially in Tanzania, mainland and Tanzania, Zanzibar. But don't forget about if, if when you talk about Tanzania, it means you're talking about Tanzania, mainland and Tanzania island. Also, we can talk about uh, the investment on health sector as well. Nowadays, uh, the people of China, our doctors from China, in, they are working in Zanzibar uh, in traditional uh, Chinese medicine, I can say. I think you are familiar with uh, uh, acupuncture mm. way of treatment. Nowadays, the uh, doctors from here in China are working in Zanzibar, and it has bring the good results since mm. it started. Yes, John. Uh, many African countries taking uh, part in the uh, import expo are uh, also part of countries of the Belt and Road Initiative. What uh, can have African countries made by uh, participating in CIIE and the Belt and Road Initiative? Abu Bakr, let me tell you this: fifteen hundred companies in all that are participating at the CIIE come from Belt and Road countries. 
3,400 companies in total. So they make up almost half of all companies participating. Why? Because they have realized that this is a great way to introduce your products into China and to reach potential Chinese customers. The Belt and Road Initiative has really given us improved connectivity um, from countries, mm. continents, and peoples. What are we going to do with that increased connectivity? You trade. Right, and you encourage that that exchanges between people, cultures, and civilization. But you need a special event. You need something concrete on the ground for all of that to happen. And the CIIE in particular is a great way to do that. So people descend in Shanghai, not just to find that platform to display their products, their services, and their technologies, but also their crucial link that will make the Belt and Road Initiative last even longer. I mean, this is a great way to utilize the infrastructure projects that have already been constructed in Africa. That is for our special segment CIIE, a global perspective. I'm Abu Bakr Harith. Stay tuned for more on ZBC.